Hello and welcome back to an academy. So let's kick me PG. Myself, Dr. Muskan Chaudhary, and today we'll cover the question answers uh, for that of the viruses. <clears throat> Remember that it is used for the 40. Yes, so uh, starting with the Academy, An Academy is India's largest learning platform where we get access to both the live and the recorded sessions. And we will be able to assess uh, the recorded sessions anytime and anywhere. So, uh, myself, Dr. Skan Chaudhary, mm -hmm. welcome. Academy. Now, learning from the India's topmost educator for any medical examination, compete in the live T and D, studying on the device of our choice, and assessing up to 25,000 of the MCQs with printed and the digital notes. Icon subscriptions and Academy Prep Data has come together where we get access to clinical and integrate essentials with video lecture queue, banks, rapid division, and the treasure and dream notes. With well structured live batches, recorded sessions, queue banks, and the TND. For the plus need PG plus, it is costing us around 36,000. That is for two years, it will be 1500 per month, and for three years, it will be 1250 and 1625 18 months. For 24 months, it's 2438. That is costing us around 58,500 for icon subscriptions. And please do use my code that is Muska. 25,000 high yield MCQs based on latest examination pattern and with detailed explanations. Special class features include the interactive live sessions attending the class, participate in the polling and get our doubts cleared. And we can do the polling, respond to a poll for a better studying of a topic, raise a hand, talk to educator and never, never miss a class because we'll get the notification for the same, attend, uh, download the lecture notes and the PDF notes and anytime and anywhere. So, uh, target NEET 2020 test in TND batch that is for three months by the topmost educators with batches with all the 19 subjects suitable for the learners and GTs available with clinical oriented questions and the recorded PDF notes. 24 month subscriptions, 4 month is totally free with 12 month, 2 month is totally free and with 6 month, 1 month is totally free and do use my code that is tend to get 10% of the discount. Now, free tests are rituals. This is a result uh, for the free test ses sessions, and an academy started the free test rituals. Now, FMG for the six months with well structured badges with all the 19 subjects in depth coverage, and uh, GTs and the live interactive sessions, recorded sessions, PDF notes, and the practice questions. Uh, so, we'll directly start with the first question of the day. So, starting with the first question that Epstein Barr virus enters the B cells through CD1, CD2, CD21, or CD19. Yes, so what is the answer? EBV enters the B cells. Yes, now uh, starting uh, talking about the EBV, EBV uses the viral glycoprotein, viral glycoprotein that is GP350. And and the cell protein, cellular protein that is CD21 to gain into the entry of the B cells and the T cells, and it causes the polyclonal activation of the B cells. So causing what hyper gamma globinemia. Also, EBV is also with a lot of uh, disease like nasopharyngeal carcinoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, oral hairy leukoplakia, and very important IMN, where atypical lymphocytes are more than 10% with lymph edipopathy. Moving to the next question. 
Human B cell lymphocytic virus belongs to the picornavirus, pox virus, rheo or the herpes virus. Yes, human B cell lymphocytic virus is nothing but it is what herpes virus. So, we also have the classification for the herpes viridae family. That is alpha, beta and gamma. In the alpha, we have the HSV1, HSV2 and the varicella zoster virus. Here we have the CMV, HHV6 that is responsible for the exanthem subitum and Yes, next was the uh, HHV, HHV8 that is also known as Kaposi sarcoma associated virus and the gamma that is for the EBV. Now, most common extra skin manifestation of the varicella is involvement of the CNS, lungs, kidney or the CVS. Uh, hi, Dr. Shruti. Very good morning. Yes, the so most common extra manifestation of the varicella is what? Extra skin manifestation for the varicella is what? The CNS. We are talking about the varicella zoster virus. That is nothing for the primary infection. It will cause the chicken pox. That is the varicella. And the reoccurrent infection, the reoccurrent infection will cause the zoster, that is the shingles. And it has very high reoccurrence rate up to that of the 80%. So that is an extra skin manifestation for the varicella is involvement of the CNS. Now, all of the following are true about the herpes group of virus, except that it is ether sensitive, may cause the malignancy. HSV2 involves the uh, below diagram and Burkitt's lymphoma involves the T cell. Yes, what is the answer? Uh, all of the following are true except which is not. It is ether sensitive. Let us know. We doesn't know about the herpes that it is what ether sensitive or not. May cause the malignancy. This is true. And herpes, we have the HSV1 and HSV2. What we study about the difference is that HSV1 by the rule involves the area that is above waist. All right. And this involves below waist. Okay, so this is true uh, that it involves the below diaphragm, below waist area and HSV that is the most common involvement is that of the oral mucosal involvement and that is the buccal, most common that is the buccal mucosa and here we have the genital involvement. Alright, Burkitt's lymphoma, Burkitt's lymphoma is also known as the B cell lymphoma and it is due to the involvement of the B cell, not T cell. So, this is a, not a true statement. 
Now, of the following, the two about the papovirus, except they are non-enveloped. They are non-enveloped eicosahedral viruses. They produce the papilloma and RNA viruses and SA40 is an oncogenic. Yes, what is the answer which of the following is not true? Now, we know that papovirus, if we know the classification for the DNA and the RNA virus, we remember that DNA is a happy virus. So, what does it mean that H4 hepat DNA viruses that we are talking for the hepatitis B, then we have the herpes, then we have the adenovirus, then we have the pox virus, we have the Papova virus and the parvovirus. So papova is nothing. It is a uh, papilloma belong papilloma virus that belongs to the papova virus. So this is a true. It is a it is not a RNA virus. It is a DNA virus. Now going to the next most common type of the HPV that is associated with the cervical cancer is 611, 58, 16, 18, or 68. Yes, so what is the answer most common type of HV that is associated with cervical virus? Now talking about the human papilloma virus, we have the HPV 611 and we have the 16, 18, 31, 33, so on 35, 39 and 51 and the 56. So talking about the HPV 6 and 11 that is responsible for the anogenital wards anogenital wards as well as the respiratory papillomatosis talking about 16 and the 18 16 and the 18 that is causing the anogenital cancers cervical cancers and the vaginal cancers but we do also have the uh, this HPV 1 and 2 that is causing the varicose vulgaris. So, talking about the HPV service cervical cancer, which is nothing but 16 and 18, apart from this 31, 33, and we also have the vaccines for them. That is what when we are having the bivalent vaccine and the quadrivalent vaccine. So, bivalent vaccine that is against the 6 and 11, and quadrivalent is 6, 11, 16, and 18. That is Cervarix and the Gerda cell. Alright. And how we remember this is how we write the G. This is how we write the Q. That is the quadrivalent. And Cervarix that is the bivalent vaccination. Now, HPV infects the which cell first? The superficial cell epidermis, basal cell, subcutaneous cells or the dermal cells. Yes, 
तो एच पी वी इन्फेक्ट एच पी वी इन्फेक्ट विच सेल फर्स्ट दैट इज द एच पी वी इन्फेक्ट द बेजल सेल फर्स्ट नाउ बायोलेंट एच पी वैक्सीन बायोलेंट एक्च कंटेन्स विच टाइप सिक्स इलेवन सिक्स and 16 16 and 18 and the 11 and Yes, so bivalent HPV vaccine. As I told you, we have two vaccinations. One is the bivalent, and another is the quadrivalent. So here only just we talked. Uh, it's sorry, it was sixteen and eighteen. And bivalent and the quadrivalent vaccine that is Cervarix and the Gardasil. Quadrivalent was the Gardasil, and we had bivalent vaccination that was sixteen and eighteen for the HPV, sixteen and the eighteen. Now. Which viral gene acts as a carcinogen, causing the carcinoma of the cervix? That is a P twenty four gene, E gene, L gene, or H gene. Yes. So, which viral gene acts as a carcinogen, causing the carcinoma of the cervix? It is what it is the E gene. It is the E gene that acts as a mutation in which of the uh, viral gene causes the carcinoma of the cervix. We have the MET one gene. We have the ERBB three gene. We have important one that is the Cas eight gene. We have the HLAA gene, and we have the TGF TGF. the r2 gene and noted muted genes the mutation in these genes is responsible for causing the carcinoma of the cervix now what the next hpv causes the uh, which change in the cervical epithelium that it induces the apoptosis induces the necrosis immortalization of the epithelial cells or none of the above Yes. So HPV causes which change in the cervical epithelium. HPV causes the immortalization of the epithelial cells, and this is due to the mutation in the genes that we have read, causing the immortalization of the genes. Uh, cells. Low risk type of HPV: sixteen, six, eighteen, or thirty-one. Easy one.
Yes, so low risk type of HPV, HPV that is the 6 and 11 is responsible for causing the anogenital warts. Condylima acuminata uh, that is the HV6 and 11 and it belongs to the low risk group of the HPV. Rest 6, 16, 18, 31, 33, 56, they all belong to the high risk one. Now, ferroconjunctival fever is caused by the adenovirus 3, 7, adenovirus 11, 21, adenovirus 40, 41, and 8 and 10. Yes, so what is the answer? The ferroconjunctival fever is caused by the Caused by which adenovirus? That is the adenovirus 3 and 7. Now, adenovirus causes all except the hemorrhagic diarrhea, respiratory tract infection or IMN. So adenovirus is when we talk about the adenovirus. Now one point we need to remember is that it is set light shape. All right. And another important point that is it is a DNA virus having the double standard DNA. Okay. Now talking about the serotypes, one to seven is responsible for causing the acute febrile pharyngitis, and that too uh, in children. Then we have the zero type that is the 3, 7 and 14 that is just we read that is responsible for causing the pharyngoconjunctival fever and that too also in the children. That is for the three, this important one that zero type uh, 3, 7 and 14 is responsible for causing the pharyngoconjunctival fever. Then we have the 8 and 9, 37 that is responsible for causing epidemic keratoconjunctivitis that is also known as shipyards I and that is the which age group is more at risk that is the adults. So one important that is causing the EKC, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, shipyards I and the pharyngoconjunctival fever. Apart from this we also have other serotypes and 40 and 41 that is causing the diarrhea and the hemorrhagic that is the 11 and the 12 as well uh, that is causing the hemorrhagic cystitis. So we have the adenovirus that is satellite shape and the DNA virus so 1 to 7 causing the febrile pharyngitis. Important one 3, 7 and the 14 that is causing the pharyngoconjunctival fever and the EKC in the 89. So it causes this, it causes diarrhea, it causes the ATI but IMN is caused by the EBV where the uh, atypical T lymphocytes are more than 10% along with the lymph adenopathy. Apart from that, uh, that is a, it is what infectious mononucleosis. Now, brick shaped virus is chickenpox, smallpox, CMV or EBV. Yes, so brick shaped virus, if you remember when we talked about the shape that box is out of box, that is it is box shape or the brick shape. 
and one more important point is that it is the largest virus having the shape, uh, size up to 200 nanometer and what else point we need to remember that the pox virus uh, although it is a dna virus uh, all the dna virus replicate in the nucleus but it will replicate where in the cytoplasma all right so this is important point and this is an enveloped virus with a complex structure all the dna viruses have the icosahedral shape symmetry but it has the complex symmetry so that is the brick shaped virus is what the smallpox virus now moving to the next one e6 e7 genes of which virus are implicated in the oncogenesis it's ebv cmv htlv hiv1 or hp Yes, so E6, E7 genes of which files are implicated in the oncogenesis. That is what, what is the answer? Yes, that is the E6, E7 gene of which virus. Now talking about the E6, E7, that is essentially HPV, HPV protects and that of the E gene. All right, E6, E7, that is the HPV E gene protects that target the P53 and the retinoblast, that is the tumor suppressor proteins. So, they actually target the P53 and the retinoblast uh, proteins and that is found there in the HPV. <laughs> Post-transplant nephropathy after one month is most likely due to hepatitis C, 6, PKB, PBK virus or the HSV. Yes, post transplant nephropathy after one month, it's most likely due to the polyoma BK virus. Now, go to the next one that is the uh, which is the most common cause of the aseptic meningitis enterovirus, herpes virus, arbovirus, retro, or orthomyxovirus. So what is the most common now most common cause for the aseptic meningitis is enterovirus and in fact 90 percent of the meningitis that is viral in origin they are caused by the enterovirus now which of the following immunization should be administered immediately after birth that is a dpd h influenza hepatitis b hiv or oral polio vaccination
so which of the following images should be administered immediately after birth it's pretty simple on that is we are talking about the hepatitis b vaccine the finding of the large multinucleated clumps of the cells in the bronchial secretion to your old with acute bronchopneumonia suggests that it is infection caused by the ebv mycoplasma rhinovirus bortella or rsv Yes, what is the answer? The finding of the large multinucleated clumps of the cells in the bronchial secretion with bronchial pneumonia suggests the infection is caused by what? It is by the RSV. So about the polio is that uh, parity polio is the most common. Only one type exists and increased muscular activity leads to increased paralysis. Polio drops given only in less than three years. So, which of the following statement is true? Pretty simple one. Now, paralytic polio is not common. It is less than 1% people that we see the paralytic polio. And polio is not only one type that is exist because we have three types, 1, 2 and 3 polio virus. One is 2 and 3. One is that is the wild type that is responsible for causing the epidemic. Then we have 2 that is responsible for endemic. And 3 that is responsible for the vaccine associated paralytic polio. So that is not only one type so this is also false this is also false the risk factors includes if the person is what pregnant person is having the increased muscular activity or on the intramuscular injections so these are the uh, risk factors for having the polio virus now polio drops are given in less than five years not three years Which of the following is the most common cause of the meningoencephalitis children? That's a mom's abhorrent HSV or the enterovirus. This is a repetitive question that the most common cause for the meningoencephalitis and the aseptic meningoencephalitis mainly. It is what the enterovirus. All are false regarding the polio virus, except most cases are asymptomatic. Uh, most cases are symptomatic. Inactivated vaccinations give uh, given IM. Inactivated polio vaccines are given to child less than three years of the age. Uh, only one type exists. So, which of the following is the true statement? So which of the following is the true statement? Easy one that most cases are asymptomatic, not symptomatic is a false statement. Inactive polyvaccine are given to child less than 5 years, not 3 years. So this is also false statement. Not only one type exists. So this is also false. That is inactivated vaccine that is given IU. Now, acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis is caused by the which enterovirus? That is 69, 72, 70 or 71.
Yes, so acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, it is caused by which enterovirus? That is the enterovirus 70. We just had the tab table for that of the uh, this uh, enterovirus. Now, true statement about the enterovirus is that it is composed of a segmented RNA genome stable at pH 4, causes the pleurodynia, causes the encephalitis, and causes the meningitis. Yes, so which of the following the two statement? Now, enterovirus is a RNA virus, but it is not a segmented. It is a non-segmented virus. So this is a false statement. We had the pneumonia for the segmented. That is the bow. That is the bow. Uh, virus, orthomyxovirus, and the CO virus, the estrovirus. It is stable at the pH four. It causes the pleurotinia. It causes the encephalitis and the meningitis. The rest all are true. A 70 year old uh, woman refused to take the influenza vaccine, developed full uh, flu. Death happened one week after the pneumonia, and cause of the post influenza pneumonia is what staph, measles, legionella, or the CMV. Yes, so a 70 year old woman now she is having the one after one week she is having the pneumonia that is the post influenza pneumonia. Now, what are the causes for the post influenza pneumonia? It is either the streptococcus pneumococci, it is all the staph aureus, or it is due to the H influenza. So, that these are the bacteria that are responsible for causing the post influenza pneumonia. Now, H5N1, H5N1 is what a uh, bird flu virus. It is a vaccine for the HIV, positive agent for Japanese encephalitis or an eradicated virus. So what is H5N1? H5N1 is nothing but it is a bird flu. It is a bird flu where there is a transmission from the bird to bird and bird to that of the human. But there is no transmission between the human to human. Now going to the next. Two statement about the influenza A virus is that it has double standard uh, segmented RNA. Pandemics are caused by the antigenic drift and a neo, uh, nucleocapsid antibody is not specific. Heme, gluten, and neuroaminidase are strain specific. Hmm. 
yes so that is what which of the following statement is true it is a single standard rna genome so this is the false statement that is double standard not a single standard rna genome consisting of around eight segments theek hai because if you remember the segments the o stands for the ortho mixovirus uh, that is the having the influenza a and the b pandemics are caused by not by the drift but it is due to the shift and that is seen in the influenza a because shift is a sudden change um, of the uh, gene because of the mutation while drift is the gradual change in the gene and is not responsible for causing the pandemics it is a shift that is responsible for causing the pandemics nucleic acid antibody is specific and heme glutenin and the neuromain days are the strain specific and even for the antibodies when we make the subunit uh, vaccination sorry then we use the heme glutenin and the neuromain days now segmented rna is found in the influenza vaccine uh, influenza virus rabies virus herpes virus or moleskum contagiosa yes segmented rna can be remembered by the mnemonic that is the pore that is b stands for b stands for bunia virus then we have o that is the ortho mixovirus which have the mixovirus that is the influenza a and the b and a that is the rna virus and r that is the rio virus so this is the mnemonic for that of the segmented that is the bunia virus rio virus and uh, rna virus as well as the ortho virus so influenza that will be included in the ortho mixovirus is segmented now incubation period is less than 10 days that is seen in influenza cholera plague chicken pox and the rabies yes so incubation period that is less than 10 days less than 10 days is seen in now for when we talk about the influenza vaccine the incubation period is uh, influenza virus that is around 1 to 4 days and then we have the cholera that is around 2 hour to that of the 5 days and 2 to 8 days that is for the plague plague sorry so incubation period that is for the influenza cholera and the plague the congenital rubella syndrome true association is that it is a uh, association with cataract vsd intracerebral hemorrhage retinitis teratology of follet limb hypoplasia uh, and sicker trisomy microcephaly hernia cerebral atresia and the coarctation of aorta
Yes, when we talk about the congenital rubella syndrome, we have the classical triad. We have the classical triad for the congenital rubella syndrome. That is what? That is a cataract. Then we have the cardiac abnormalities, and that is the mainly the patent ductus arteriosus. Then we have the VSD, and the that is a ventricular septal defect as well. What else? That is the deafness. All right, and that is a mainly the sensory neural hearing loss. So cataract VSD and rest third option that is an intracerebral hemorrhage. It also does have the association with that of the congenital rubella syndrome. Now, even after that, the other manifestations are also there in the congenital rubella syndrome, that is the growth retardation or the hepatosplenomegaly or the meningoencephalitis, or that is a CNS de defect causing the uh, this intracerebral hemorrhage. True about the congenital rubella syndrome is that uh, occurs in infections after 20 weeks, more chances of the birth defect. Uh, if acquired late and leads to the chronic infection in the affected child caused by the virus that belongs to the Toga virus family. Yes, what is the answer? So true about the congenital rubella syndrome. Now congenital rubella is an infection of the first trimester of the pregnancy, and that is the before 20. So this is a false statement. And infection is acquired early; it will be more dangerous. Leads to the acute infection, not the chronic, and after the birth, and it is caused by the virus that is belonging to the Toga viridae family. Now. Coming to the next one, that uh, with reference to mums, which of the following is true? Meningoencephalitis can precede the parotitis. Salivary gland involvement is limited to parotid gland. The patient is not infectious before the clinical parotid enlargement. Mums or orchitis frequently leads to the infertility. Yes, so with reference to mums, which of the following statement is true? Uh, salivary gland involvement is not just limited to parotid, but even the submandibular and the sublingual glands. And the patient is infectious even before the parotid gland enlargement. Mums or chitis, even only if it is uh, bilateral, then only will lead to infertility. And bilateral or chitis is present in less than 15%. So that is not frequently leading to the infertility because orchitis is generally uh, unilateral in the that is talking about the mouse. So meningoencephalitis can precede the parotitis. Now coming to the next one. In acute hepatitis B infection, which of the following is first to appear in the serum? That is HBS AG, NTHBS, HBC AG, NTHBE. Pretty simple one that in acute hepatitis, the first to appear in the serum is what which antigen that the HBS. Epidemiological study of hepatitis B is HBS, AG, or IgG, anti HBC, HBC, AG, or HBE, AG.
yes so epidemiological study of hepatitis b is igg and thbc multiple food related infectivity of serum in hepatitis b is hbs ag hbc ag hbe ag or hbe antibody Not talking about uh, micro relative infectivity, HBS doesn't indicate the relative infectivity. Uh, it is for the acute infection, but doesn't indicate the viral load. HBS AG is non detected. Then we have the HBE antigen. Now a presence of that of the HBE antigen indicates that a viral load is very high and the person is highly infectious. Now moving to the next one. A 30-year-old nurse suffered a needle stick injury that the patient uses the elicit intravenous drug. One month later, the nurse developed jaundice. The following findings would, would implicate the hepatitis B as the etiology, positive anti uh, B HBS AG uh, antibody, positive anti HB4 antibody, positive hepatitis B surface antigen, positive anti hepatitis A antibody. Yes, now a person has suffered a needle stick injury to in indicate, to implicate the hepatitis B as etiology. HBS antigen would be considered because they are positive until the six months after the acquired of that of the uh, hepatitis. Acute hepatitis B infection is diagnosed by the HBS antigen, anti HBS antigen, anti HBC IgM, or anti HBE. Yes, acute hepatitis B infection is diagnosed by, we are talking about the acute, so we will not go with that of the IgG, we will go for the IgM, that is the anti-HBC IgM. Now, avian influenza is due to the H1N1, H3N1, H5N1 or the H7N1. Yes, so avian influenza, we are talking about the bird flu that is by the H5N1, H1N1 is what? Swine flu. Now, a 70 year old refused to take the same. We did this question. Now, reason for the H5N1 influenza not becoming pandemic is that man to man transmission is rare or no human to human transmission occurs. It is less violent or bird to bird transmission is not efficient. So reason for the H5N1 influenza not becoming a pandemic is so we are talking about the bird flu.
so that is the uh, man to man transmission is not possible this is to that is no human to human transmission therefore it has not become a pandemic until now new influenza vaccines includes new influenza vaccines include spit virus vaccine neuroaminidase live admit vaccine killed vaccine or the recombinant So new influenza vaccines can includes we have two types of vaccines one is the traditional one and another is the new one in the traditional we have the live admitted vaccine and the kill other than the split vaccine neuroaminidase and recombinant vaccine they are what in the new uh, uh, new influenza vaccines now quickly we'll complete the image so what is this identify the image so this is nothing but this is the pox virus that is what brick shape or the box shape this is the pox virus that is the brick shape or the box shape and you can clearly identify the dumbbell shaped nucleus the dumbbell shaped nucleus and it is the largest virus with that of the 200 nanometer and it has the complex symmetry not an icosahedral and being it a dna virus it still replicates in that of the cytoplasma so that is the largest virus and loved with the complex capsid double standard DNA replicate in the cytoplasma. Now coming to the next virus, please identify the image. Yes, please identify the image is nothing but the patelloid form of the virus, patelloid virus that is we are talking about what the corona virus. Identify the next image. So it is what it is the filamentous virus filamentous virus and that is what the helical shape helical shape and or we can also say that is the u shape in the shape of the which that is we are talking about ebola virus we are talking about the ebola virus coming to the next one identify this one Yes, so this is the bullet shaped virus. Bullet shaped virus that is, we are talking about. We are talking about AB's virus. And what is this? is nothing but it is intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies 
that is we are talking about we are talking about the negri bodies and where in the rabies this one identify easy one this is the owl's eye appearance of what the inclusion bodies that are both intracytoplasmic as well as intranuclear found where well in the cmv that is the cytomegalovirus you can see the intracytoplasmic and the intranuclear inclusion bodies that is the CMV, that is the owl's eye inclusion bodies. Then we have the HSV, that is cowdery type A. We remembered by the mnemonic A, that is H for the herpes virus and Y for the yellow fever having the cowdery type A inclusion bodies. And the negri bodies, where it is present, that in the rabies infection. So rabies, we have the negri bodies. We have the CMV, that is the owl's eye and the cowdery type A in the herpes and the yellow fever. Moving to the next image, you can clearly see the intracytoplasmic as well as the intranuclear. Intracytoplasmic as well as the intranuclear inclusion bodies that is found where. In that of the, we are talking about the measles and M. colta karenge to that is the what thin fingal day cells. Apart from the measles, they are also found in some cases of the HIV. So that is the what thin fingal day giant cells that is having high NC ratio, crowded in, uh, nuclei and examples include the measles. But apart from the measles, we also do have the uh, HIV association. This is very important table with the intracytoplasmic HP bodies and molluscum, negri in the rabies, guarnery and the passion in the pox, pollinger and the bird in the fowl pox. Then we remember the cowdery type A that is H for herpes and the yellow fever and the cowdery type in the polio that is the cap that is the polio, adeno and the CMV. CMV we have both the intracytoplasmic as well as the intranuclear. Identify the image. I'll give you a hint. This is what the tiger mosquito. Tiger mosquito. That means we are talking about what? We are talking about KDs. That is the vector for what? Vector for the yellow fever. Vector for the chikungunya. And the vector for the dengue. So we are talking about the tiger mosquito. Identify the next one and to the virus association it shows this is the Tulex mosquito and you can see the feathery limbs and the feathers all over the body. This is the Tulex mosquito and vector for the Japanese and Kephalitis. How is the ADs, anophilix, and the Culex some uh, differences we need to remember? All it is a causative agent for the Japanese encephalitis. ADs we have already seen for that was chikungunya, dengue, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. Then we have the anophilus. Uh, and anophilus, apart from the malaria, when we talk about the viruses, it is responsible for causing the nyong nyong virus association. This is a vector. Scientific name is tiger mosquito. This is what the, we are talking about the ADs. Then we have the Culex. Then we have the uh, Anophilus. Culex Vishnoi in India is responsible for the Japanese encephalitis in India. So that was it. Thank you for the today's session. And please do use my tool that is Muskan 10 to get like to get the 10% of the discount. And do like, share, subscribe. So I'll see you in the uh, special.
class so take care and bye bye